Aimed at those who are inexperienced painters, Painting for Us Mere Mortals is here to give help and tips. You will see mistakes as small miniature is blown up to full screen. Don't be discouraged by this. Remember, like all skills worth having, the more you do, the better you will become. Hope you enjoy and find this useful. This tutorial is going to focus on the steam tank from the Empire Army book from the Warhammer Fantasy range. It's one of my favourite models, loads of detail, excellent looking model and with the engine on the back it actually looks like it could work. What you see here is the constructed steam tank, all sprayed silver. Um, I then take the wheels off, the uh, turret at the top and I used BC Brown to go over all the woodwork on the top. The reason I've taken the wheels off of the turret is just so it's easier to get to the other parts. There is a considerable amount of wood on the vehicle, including the actual steam um, chamber on the back with the wooden plate in. Just take your time, work your way around, ensuring that you don't get any of the brown paint on any of the silver that you want to keep. If you do, then it's just a case of going back over with silver paint. I then use the sediment white um, to paint the white areas of the shields and the rest of the tank that I want to be painted white. This is a base white and does quite a good coverage. Nowadays when I tend to paint I use a very light grey as a base coat um, but ceramite white is good at doing the same job. The arms of the engineer that pops out the turret, I also paint white initially, and the feather and the rest, ready for a red coat later. Now to a base coat of Balthazar's gold, I work my way around the steam tank picking out the rails and all the details to contrast it sharply from the silver backing. I also use the Balthazar Gold on the pistons at the back, uh, the fittings around that to give it a bit of contrast from the steel and also on the chimney at the back all that was made because often in real life you would have something like that made from copper or brass beaten into place.
Bolters are gold again to pick out the highlights on the hub of the wheel and also the details on the engineer's cap and I, from memory I think I even painted these glasses as well in a gold colour. The whole theme of my army, my empire army, is red and white. That's why I've chosen to go on each of the shields that I previously painted white and do um, a pattern. Now on this side you can see that I'm dividing it down the vertical and on the other side I've got some uh, horizontal ones uh, where I'll draw an, uh, draw an indicator line and then just fill the rest in with the red. In this occasion it was corn red that I used. I used uh, Bugman's flesh colour to pick out the face, uh, the brow and the hands of the engineer as well. Then with the black wash I'll get around to all the uh, pieces of the steam tank where two metal plates join. Also if there is a gold decoration like there is in the lid there, I'll do uh, black, use the black wash, uh, bad out black, to go around the edges uh, to, pick, to make it stand out. You can see me using the bad out black here to go over the wooden areas, and what that does is it sinks into the grain of the wood and makes it look like proper old wood. Repeating the same process over the decking of the steam tank, just go over it with black wash um, and you'll find that again it sinks in and makes the planks and the grain really stand out. You'll notice when I come to the uh, chimney on the back of it that I give it quite a generous coating of the Badab Black because I want it to look like a chimney, I want it to look like it's had smoke coming out and that it's proper sooted up. Uh, maybe a bit round the actual cannon mouth as well. I now use white scar, which is the layer version of the white from Games Workshop, to give the uh, coat or any areas that I painted in the ceramite white a second coating to make it proper white. Um, gives a good way of getting a depth to the white and it also ties up any areas where I went over with red where I should not. In order to make the fabric uh, look different to the white of the shields, I've painted it with bone uh, to, you know, make it look more like a, a cotton material. With Wild Rider Red, I'm just working my way round the edges that were previously painted corn red. Um, Wild Rider Red is a light, very light layer paint, and it's good for defining the edges. Back to white scar now, back to the bone material that I did to make look like fabric, and again edge highlight. 
you can see me now drawing in a thin black line on the pressure gauge um, you know you could do that with a, a fine nibbed pen if you wanted to as well once I've got the background colors correct on the shields I then use Balthazar gold to go over picking all the emblems out to make those stand off the shield backgrounds Dwarf flesh to highlight the bugman's flesh that was applied earlier to indicate highlights on the skin. Or it gold to go around the edges just to make the gold again give it that depth, make it stand out. So it, it looks like a real gold item rather than just something painted in a single layer of colour. On the steam tank, particularly the planking, there's lots of rivets and I'm just using gunmetal now to go around and pick those rivets out. Lots of them, just take your time, use a small brush, not to be in a rush and just pick out those uh, rivets. That's most of the detail finished now um, and time for some close-up photos. The area that you see where there's text on the fabric, um, the scrolls and the rest that are attached to the shields, that is done with a 0.1. Uh, drawing pen a very fine nib on that so be careful but it is good for doing stuff like the logos like you can see that i've done carl franz on the front at the beginning thanks for watching catch you again soon